winter storms made way for spring in every season from where I'm standing was rich I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your side so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross you paid the debt i owe broke my chains freed my soul for the first time i for the blood applied thank you jesus 
place laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you walked right out again and now death has no sting and life has no end for i have been transformed by the blood the blood of the Lamb. Glory to His my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body Dressed in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The end. 
stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me conspicuously but the other thousand they just was just out there so, so if you walked out there you found an Easter egg and we're grateful for all those that were involved for those that planned and for the kids that come out we hope you had a wonderful time just a couple of quick announcements we do welcome you to Parkview for those that are viewing on our live stream thank you for tuning in and, and thank you for being here today um, they was thinking about not having children's church, thinking that the kids might want to sit with the parents, which you are welcome to do. But for those that want to go, we are going to have children's church in a moment, and you'll be able to leave and, uh, and go do something fun. But uh, also, there's no D groups tonight. We're going to spend the night uh, as a time just being with family and continuing to celebrate Easter, so we won't meet with our D groups. We'll uh, be back meeting next Sunday night. And... Uh, 
today, once again, my father's preaching today. I'm always excited to hear my father preach, and we do pray that God uses him today uh, as he speaks to us on this Easter Sunday. I do want to let you know of a few things coming up, an exciting time in our church. Uh, Sunday, April 14th, our prospective pastor will be preaching on Sunday, April 14th. He will also be preaching Sunday, April 21st. So there will be two opportunities for you to hear him. Also, inside your bulletin, if you see this sheet, there's a sheet where you can actually go to a, to a link or a Facebook if you want to hear him even more. Uh, just to tell you why we're doing that, this is because Wayne Russell wants you to have the um, time. He wants you to have time to pray. He wants you to have time to listen. He wants you involved in this decision. And just real briefly, I've shared this on Wednesday nights a couple of times. So some of, uh, some of y'all that's here on Wednesday night, this will be a repeat. But we want you to know what God's done and how we got to where we are. Wayne Russell was not looking to leave where he was at. God was instrumental in this process even long ago before we even knew about Wayne Russell. God began doing some things in the lives of people that brought us to this point. So this is something that God's done, not something that Wayne's done, not something our committee's done. Trust me, it is a God thing. Who knew that years ago that a couple would come to this church and join and they were told where they needed to come to church. We didn't need a pastor then, but God placed these two people in our church so that they would later hand a name and a number off to somebody saying, you need to listen to this guy. Now, the timing wasn't right, so it got stuffed in a Bible, and sometime later when the timing was right, when God had done what all he wanted to do, that Wayne Russell received a phone call from a committee member, said, hey, would you consider coming to be our pastor? Now, he wasn't looking. He don't even have a resume. He, not a resume on file. But this man's willing to do. He is so willing to follow God that his first remarks, I'll do whatever God tells me to do. Here we are. <laughs> This is, a, this is a miracle from God. It is the action of God. It is something that God has done. And we want you to understand that. Wayne Russell wants you to understand that. That this is a God thing. And he will be here in a couple of Sundays. We've already done a lot of things. Most of y'all have had an opportunity to meet him. And I am excited for what God has in store for Parkview Baptist Church. Um, let's pray. And we'll get started in worship. Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, for being willing to die on a cross for us. Lord, we celebrate that today. Uh, Lord, there's going to be a lot of things. There's been things going on this weekend. There's things going on today. And I'm sure even in our homes we'll have things today. Lord, but we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ today. We worship you. Lord, today is not about me. It's all about you. And, Lord, I pray that, that we understand that. And I pray that it sounds like that. I pray that it looks like that. God, we lift up the name of Jesus Christ today. In Jesus' name, amen. Understanding it. If you find yourself struggling to understand God's grace, don't beat yourself up. Even the disciples struggled with understanding grace. Jesus, is that you? You're alive. I can't believe you're alive. Okay, I was in the boat, and I wasn't catching any fish, okay? But I heard this voice, and the voice said, cast your net to the other side. And so I'm thinking, no, I'm a fisherman. I know what I'm doing, but I'm not catching any fish, you know? And so I throw that net over there, and then a gaggle of fish pop into that net, and I'm going, this is a total miracle. Who could have done that? I need to know who told me to throw the net to the other side. And boom, I look up, and I mean, there is you. You're looking at me on the seashore going, it is I, the Lord, and you're alive. I can't believe you're alive. <laughs> this is awesome. Andrew, get out of the boat. Come on. Peter, yeah. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. I love you. You're alive. This is so great. Good. And then feed my sheep. Andrew, get out of the boat. Come on, man. It's him. Peter. Yeah. Do you love me? I love you. Yes. And I'm so sorry about that rooster cluck, and I had no idea what that meant, but I do not. I'm better for it. All right. Okay. Then feed my sheep. Andrew, I'm smiling, but I'm serious. Come on, get out of the boat. It's him. Peter. Yeah. Do you love me? Jesus, 
Mere words cannot describe the passion that I have for you. I love you. You know everything. I love you. Good. Good. Then feed my sheep. I didn't even know you had livestock. That is so like you, though. There's something new about you all the time. That's what I love about you. Peter, yeah. do you remember uh, the morning the ladies went to the tomb? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all in the upper room trying to figure out what to do next, you know, because we thought you were dead. You know, you were dead, you know, and we're trying to figure all that out, you know. And Mary comes running up, and Mary's like saying, beehive, beehive, beehive. And I'm thinking, I'm allergic to bees. Like, keep them out, you know what I'm saying? But as she kept getting closer, I heard her correctly. She was saying, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. And we're going, who's alive, who's alive? And she said, she was at the tomb, and the tomb was empty. And she said that the, there was an angel there. And the angel said, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay. He is risen. And so me and John, we hightailed it down there. And if John says he beat me, he's totally lying, all right? I beat him, FYI, all right, you know? And we get down there, and I'm looking in that tomb, and it is. It is empty. There's nothing in there, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? And John is right there. John is so good with words. He should write a book. He is so good with words. And John said, don't you get it, Peter? This is everything Jesus said he was going to do, and you did it, and it's done. Let's go. This is so great. Wait, yeah. the angel said what? Uh, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay. He is risen. You've risen. Let's go. This he is said okay. what? Go tell the disciples and Peter. Go tell the disciples and Peter. You said my name. Why did you say my name? Peter, that's grace. No, no, I don't, I don't deserve that because that night people kept coming up to me asking me if I belonged to you, if I was with you, and I kept denying you left and right, all right? No, it'll take me my whole life to make up for what I did. It was unforgivable for no, what I did. No, What I did on the cross was meant to take what is unforgivable and make it forgivable. That's my grace. It's not about you. It's always about me. That's grace, Peter. You would join with us this morning. If you want to stand and sing, that'd be great. If you want to sit, it's perfectly fine. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms make way for spring In every season From where I'm standing I see the evidence of your goodness All over my life All over my life I see your promises and all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak. Fear may come, but fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life all over my life see the cross the empty grave the evidence is sin rolled away because of you oh Jesus see the cross the empty grave the evidence is endless all my sin rolled away because of you oh Jesus oh I see the evidence of your goodness all all over my life I see your promise
promises and fulfillments all over my life, all over my life. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed.
see him you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory in the darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the Yeah. 
Too bad stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create, for I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping or the cry of distress. How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the street to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Sing through doubt and fear. In the end, sing that it was worth it when he returns to wipe away our tears. There will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day. Heaven with angels and the saints. 
Peter this morning when he realizes the grace that you have. What Easter means that there's grace, there's forgiveness, there's making the unforgivable forgivable. Lord, we're gathered here on this Easter morning and we have a great congregation of people here today. Lord, you know who needed to hear that. You know who needs to hear the message that Brother Herman's going to bring. So Lord, would you just touch us today? Your spirit is here. Would you move in amongst us, move up and down these pews, touch hearts and lives today. That because you live, we may live also. In the precious, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for leading us in worship today as we have sung and worshiped our resurrected Lord. It's been a wonderful, wonderful morning of worship. If you... Uh, Think during the prayer you saw Stephen helping me up here to the platform. I told a guy the other day, I'm walking like an 82-year-old man. He said, Brother Herman, how old are you? I said, I'm 82, but I'm, I'm walking my age. I love Easter, don't you? Oh, what a wonderful time of the year that is. Easter and part of the carnal mindset I have sometimes I love Easter eggs. I just do. I mean, Easter eggs are better than just boiled eggs, especially after you've hit them a while and got them all cracked and dirty. Boy, they're good. When I was pastor here over 30 years ago, the people heard that I loved Easter eggs. And so one Easter Sunday, they had a big basket here, and I didn't know they were going to do this. Everybody brought the pastor some Easter eggs. I got home and I counted my Easter eggs. I had 276 Easter eggs. I'm telling you, I ate Easter eggs. They were out of my ears. I sure did. But I still love Easter eggs. But aren't we glad that our Lord has risen again? Amen. What a, what a wonderful thing to sing about today. I want to preach about that this morning. I want to entitle our sermon, Walking with the Risen Lord. In Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, I want to commence our reading at verse number 13. Luke 24, verses 13 and following. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all those things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk, and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all of this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished when early in the morning, and when they found not his body, they came saying, that they had seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found that even as they, the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, 
Oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whether they went, and he made as though he would have gone no farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of the bread. Walking with the risen Lord. Let's bow together, please. Let us pray. Father, we could go home right now and say it's been good to have been in the house of the Lord because we've worshipped you through singing and through the scripture and through prayers. Now we come to worship you through the preaching of your word. Lord, all of us know that no man can preach in power unless you empower him. You don't have to use me, I know that, but God, if you should choose to, we would be grateful. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, and we shall praise you forever for it. For it's in the strong name of Christ our Lord we pray, amen. It has been said that the most significant event in history is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We understand that his resurrection is fundamental to our Christian faith. In fact, if Jesus were not raised from the dead, Christianity would collapse in the dust of other harmless and meaningless religions. <laughs> The Apostle Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians 15, If Christ be not risen, your faith is vain. If Christ be not risen, you have no gospel to preach. If Christ be not risen, your sins are not forgiven. If Christ be not risen, your loved ones have perished a long time ago. If Christ be not risen, we are of all men most miserable. But aren't you glad that Jesus Christ did rise from the grave? It is so important. In fact, we cannot overstate the impact that the resurrection has on our lives. In fact, the Bible teaches if you don't believe in the resurrection, you cannot be saved. For Romans 10, 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I suppose that's the reason that the devil has, has so viciously attacked the doctrine of the resurrection. And that's why the gospel writers made such an enormous ma matter of the resurrection. And so today, I want to talk about that for a few minutes. We're looking at two men who were traveling from Jerusalem back to Emmaus when they encountered the resurrected Lord. I want us to see their burdened hearts, their burning hearts, and their believing hearts. We begin by talking about their burdened hearts. 
We don't know anything about these two believers except what we read in Luke 24. We know that one of them's name was Cleopas, the other one remains unidentified. Perhaps they lived in the little village of Emmaus, seven or eight miles from the city of Jerusalem. And they were now going back home to try to figure all the events that happened, what, was, what it was all about. And our Lord then appeared unto them. We know this. We know they were in a state of despair. Jesus raised the question, what are you talking about that makes you so sad? It had been three days since Jesus had been crucified. Perhaps from a distance they had watched him die on the cross. They watched him as they nailed him to the cross and lifted him up to die. They had never seen one die so painfully and in such a shameful environment. But there he was. Not a criminal, but their master, their leader, their friend, the one they loved, the one they worshipped, the one they served, the one they put their trust in, the one in whom they had put their hope, and now he was dead. Their hopes were crushed, their faith was shattered, their dreams were destroyed. What would they do? What would happen to them? Where would they go? Who can now tell us about all of these things? And so they were in a state of great sorrow and despair. We know about their doubts. Their faith had been shaken and they had begun to doubt the word about the resurrection. They had begun to doubt even the words of the Lord Jesus because again and again he had told them, I'm going to die, but three days later I will rise again. For example, in Matthew chapter 12, he said, As Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights, so the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. And then in Mark chapter 8, he had said to them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the high priest and the scribes, and they will kill him, but three days later he will rise from the grave. In Luke chapter 18, he had said to the, said to the twelve, I'm going to Jerusalem and be delivered to the Gentiles, and they will mock me, and I will be beaten and I will be killed, but three days later I shall rise from the grave. And in John chapter 2 he said, Destroy this temple referring to his body, and in three days I will raise it up again. And in John chapter 14 he said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. How could he go and prepare a place if he's in the tomb? How could he come to receive them if he is dead? He had assured them, I'm going to die, but I'm going to be raised again. But they doubted the words of their precious Lord. And since they doubted his words, they would not believe the word of anybody else that talked about the risen Lord for some women early in the morning on the first day of the week went to the tomb where Jesus was buried. They were carrying spices with them to anoint the body of their Savior, their master. I preached a sermon one Easter on spices that were never used because when they got there, they discovered the stone that sealed the grave was moved and the body was not there. The tomb was empty. And then some angels said to them, he's not here, he is risen as he said. And then Peter and John heard the words of these excited women and they went to look for themselves and they found the tomb empty and the grave clothes were, were not ruffled at all but, and were not disturbed and the cloth that wrapped his face was folded in place by itself. 
and they came back with the news. But these disciples didn't believe it. They said, these women astonished us, but we don't believe. And they said, these guys told us the tomb was empty, but they didn't see him, they said, so we don't believe. If you will not believe the words of Jesus, apparently you're not going to believe the testimony that anybody tells you about the resurrected Lord. So their hearts were burdened. But I want to go to second thought and talk about their burning hearts. I want to begin by talking about the interruption of a stranger as they walked that road from Jerusalem to Emmaus. The, there was appearance of one who began to walk beside them. We understand now it was a resurrected Lord, but Cleopas said it was a stranger in Jerusalem. They didn't recognize who he was. Can you walk with a risen Christ and not know? I thought about that a lot. Uh, why didn't they recognize him? One writer said, well, their heads were bowed so low they just didn't even see him. But it seems to me they could have recognized his voice when he spoke to them. They had heard him speak so many times, but no. I really believe that it was supernatural blindness that the Lord did not reveal who he was until he had carried them through the scriptures. I've discovered God will show a lot about himself if we'll stay in his word. And so we understand the interruption of the stranger. But note the conversation with the Savior. Jesus opened the conversation by saying, what are you talking about? What are you discussing that has made you so sad? And Cleopas answered, are you kidding? He said, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem that have not heard about the things that happened this week? And Jesus said, what things? Isn't this like our gracious Lord? He who knows all things, even before they happen, will let us tell him things that he already knows. But after all, that's the experience of prayer, is it not? The Lord invites us to come and lay our hearts out before him and talk to him and, and telling all things, even though he knows all things before we ever think them and before we ever say them and before we ever do it. But that's our gracious Lord. And so he let them talk. Tell me, what things are you talking about? And they began both talking at the same time. Concerning Jesus, the one from Nazareth, the one, the prophet who was mighty in word and deed before God and the people. And our religious leaders condemned him and have him crucified. And he's dead. And this is three days later. And yes, some women came back and said that he's alive, but we didn't believe that. And then our guys also said the tomb was empty. We don't believe that. Oh, what a, what a sad, sad day for them. And Jesus let them talk for a while. And then he interrupted the conversation. He began to talk. And we notice not only the interruption of the stranger and the conversation with the Savior, but note the exposition of the Scripture. Jesus said, all oh, you foolish guys, and slow to believe all that the prophets said about Messiah. Don't you understand? They said, we thought he was going to be the deliverer that would set free and from the, the oppression of God's people. And Jesus, don't you understand all that the prophets and Moses said? how they did talk about the deliverer coming as a glorified king, but you missed a vital part. They said before the time of glory, there was going to be a time of suffering. He would come as the Messiah. Yes, he would come to suffer first, and then later you would see his glory. Didn't you read about that? Didn't you read about that in the Scripture? They had read about the, the, the crown, but they had not read about the cross. They had read about the glory, but not the suffering. And so Jesus took them through the scriptures 
concerning those scriptures that talked about his death and resurrection. What a Bible study that must have been. What do you think the Lord talked to them about? Well, it may be he began back in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 and said, You remember after Adam and Eve sinned that the word from the Lord said that the seed of, the, of this woman, that the seed of the serpent would bruise the heel of the seed of the woman, but the seed of the woman would crush the head of the seed of the serpent. That was the first, uh, the first word about the coming Messiah who would be bruised, but who would crush the serpent's head. And maybe then he went to Genesis chapter 22. You read about when Abraham said to his son Isaac, the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. That sacrifice that Abraham talked about was Messiah. You're Messiah. You're Christ, your Savior. Then perhaps our Lord went to Exodus chapter 12 and talked about the Passover lamb whose blood was shed and the blood was sprinkled on the doorpost to save the firstborn's life of the family. And maybe Jesus said that Passover lamb was a picture of the coming Messiah who indeed would pour out his blood and by the shedding of blood would stay the wrath of a holy God. Maybe he then went on to Leviticus 16 and talked about the Day of Atonement when the high priest would take two goats and would lay his hands on the head of one goat and confess the sins of the people and then loose it to bear the sins away in the wilderness and then take the second goat and slay it and take the blood and go inside the Holy of Holies and sprinkle it on the mercy seat for the atonement of the sins of the people. Maybe Jesus says, your Messiah is the one who bore our sins away and whose blood has cleansed us from all sin. And you know he must have gone to Psalm 22 and Psalm 69 that talks about the suffering of our Lord. And certainly Isaiah 53 who said he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Ah, they were spellbound. They couldn't get over it. What a Bible study as our precious Lord opened up the scriptures to them. Later they said, did not our hearts burn within us? Burning heart, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked with us by the way and opened unto us the scripture? Have you ever been there? I'll tell you what, I have a lot of time sitting there on the pew and hearing God's men preach the word of God and opening the word of God and my heart just burned within me. In my own private time, taking the word of God and just reading for myself and all of a sudden God shows me a truth I've never seen and my heart was so excited, just burned within me as I read the word of God. There was the burdened hearts, there was the burning hearts, but note the believing hearts. They had heard the scriptures. And there are four things I want to say about open. Our Lord had opened the scriptures to them. And when the scriptures were opened, their ears were open to hear. Their ears were open to hear. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And our Lord had carried them through a Bible study. And now their ears had heard the truth. But not only were their ears open, but their home was in open to receive the truth. Jesus acted like he was going to go on when they reached their house. They said, you can't go. You must come inside. We haven't heard all we want to hear. Stay with us a little longer. In fact, the word is a, is a strong word. It says they forced him. They compelled him to come in. You've got to come in, they said, and stay with us. Stay with us. Spend some time with us. And he did, being the gracious servant, that is, Savior that he is. And as they reclined at the table and began to eat, he continued to talk with them. They got so carried away with it, they forgot who was a host. I mean, they were supposed to be serving this one, were they not? But the Bible says that Jesus took the bread, and he broke it, 
and he blessed it. He became the host. Have you discovered that in your own life, that when you come to him, that he always takes over in your life? He became the host. And as he broke the bread and blessed it and gave it to them, their eyes were open to see. They saw him. They recognized him. Ah, was it how he broke the bread? Was it how he blessed the bread? Or did they see the nail prints in his hand? Or is it that our Lord opened their eyes that they might recognize him? The scriptures were open. Their ears were opened. Their home was open to receive the truth. And then their eyes were open to recognize the truth. What an experience they had. One last thing, the open scripture, the open ears, the open home, the open eyes, but then the open mouth. Jesus vanished out of their sight. And they said to each other, you know what? We've got to go back to Jerusalem. We've got to go back to Jerusalem. It's dark, it's late, yes, but we've got to go back to Jerusalem. We've got to tell what we've seen, what we've heard, what we've experienced. We've got to tell them that he's alive. We've got to go back and tell him. And so they got up. And you know, I don't know, the scripture doesn't say that. I expect they ran all seven or eight miles about to Jerusalem. They were so excited. They rushed through the western gate. They went inside the home, up the stairs, in the room where the 11 were. And they opened the door and said, he's alive. He's alive. We saw him. We heard him. We walked with him. We even ate with him. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. I want to ask the church today, isn't that good news for the world to hear? Don't you think it's about time that we begin to open our mouths and begin to tell it and tell people that our Lord is alive? Maybe I've come here today just to tell you from my own heart, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I meet him, he's always near. Hallelujah. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me. Long life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me, how do you know he lives? He lives within my heart. Yes, he does. He's alive, church. I want to ask you, have you experienced the risen Christ? Is he living in your life? Are you walking with him? It's about time we tell people he's alive. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I want to ask you, you just do it for my sake. Would you just say to your neighbor, he's alive? Would you do that? He's alive. He's alive. Hey, I'll tell you what, he's alive. Why don't this group over here tell this group, hey, he's alive. Won't y'all tell it right? Right, he's alive. All right, why don't this group tell this group, he's alive. Tell the clock, tell the balcony, he's alive. Tell him them, tell him that. Balcony, can you tell this group down here he's alive? I'm telling you, hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Walking with the risen Lord. Let's bow together, please, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'm overwhelmed when I think about what you've done for me. This wretched sinner who had no hope, who had rebelled against your grace, your love, who resisted you, who were no part of church, were no part of you, but you, you didn't leave me alone. Thank you, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, like the hound of heaven that just kept after me, bringing me to myself, to my sins. And Lord, you made a new creation out of me. Thank you for the grace of the Lord and for the life I now have in Christ. Oh, I thank you. How can I thank you enough? Lord, there's no way. I feel like I need to get on my face before you and say thank you.
thank you, Lord Jesus, for living in my life and for making such a difference. I pray for my friends who don't know that experience and made a day when we began to sing presently that you began to prick their hearts and God, they'd hear your voice. They'd open their hearts to receive you that their eyes might recognize who you are. And God, that you'd change their lives and they might be able to share with others about the resurrected Lord. And God, I don't know what you want to do in this hour. I don't know if it's Easter Sunday. And I know folks are hesitant about doing anything public on each Sunday. But God, if you were speaking to them, I pray they'd be bold enough to just walk down this aisle and say, and Brother Herman, I want, to, I want to make this commitment to Jesus Christ. Lord, would you help us now during this hour to do what we need to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to come and sing in just a moment. And if you don't know this risen Lord, we invite you to him. All we do, he'll change your life. I promise you that. You say, Brother, I don't know how to do that. Just come and let, I'll talk with you. I'll read God's word to you. Just acknowledge that you're a sinner and you want to repent of your sins. And by faith, you trust Jesus and Jesus alone to come into your life and change. He'll do it, I promise you. I'll pray with you to come. Maybe you're a Christian. You have been very silent about that. Maybe you want to come and say, God, I'm sorry. I want to begin to tell people that you're alive. You say, can I do that back? You can, but your Lord may want you to come and just publicly say to this congregation, I've come to say, I'm going to begin to share the risen Christ story with other people. Whatever God lays in your heart, would you just do that? Let's stand together, please, and let's sing. How deep the Father's love for us. 